So if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing that you want to get better at whoop racing. Now there's this real big misconception in the hobby that you need this perfect venue, this wide open space where you can put out a ton of gates and fly a big great track to be able to grind and get better to compete at a high level um, on the whoop racing scene. However, I've really found over the past year living in a small one bedroom apartment that that's not the case and that there's a lot of really useful drills and tactics that you can use uh, to improve in a small space and it actually benefits you greatly when it comes to uh, performing under pressure in a big race. So I thought I'd do a little video series. This is going to be part one and I'm just going to run through some of the obstacles I build as well as some of the drills that I do um, as I am thinking about practicing. Now Whoop season is right around the corner. This is really exciting. Whooptopia tickets go on sale next week. About every year this time, uh, there's just a lot of interest in uh, the start of the whoop season. So thought no better time to get this video made. And today we're gonna be talking about the ladder. The ladder is one of the most important uh, features on the track because it's such a versatile uh, move and it basically is your ability to turn or to corkscrew consistently and fast. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit more a little bit later when we're practicing um, and I'm showing you guys some of the drills I'm working on, but we're actually gonna go ahead and run to the hardware store and I'm gonna show you guys how I build a ladder out of three quarter inch PVC pipe. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that when we get to the hardware store. Let's go ahead and head to Lowe's. All right, so we're here in the PVC pipe section at Lowe's and there's a lot of different styles of pipe, obviously based on diameter, but also based on wall thickness. Uh, so there is this thick wall schedule 40 stuff that is really heavy duty um, and honestly overkill for what we need. Um, so I wouldn't recommend getting this stuff. What I would recommend you get is to get the thin wall uh, three quarter inch pipe. It's a lot lighter. It's easier to work with, much easier to cut um, and is just lighter in general for better transportability of your ladder gate. Um, and you can also put LEDs in this thing pretty easily and they light up really well through the thinner wall of the pipe. So you're gonna need two pieces um, of this pipe to make a 24 inch ladder. All right, so we've got our pipe here. Another thing is that they come in 10 foot segments. So uh, those two pieces need to be 10 feet long. Um, but if you don't have a vehicle that you can put 10 feet worth of pipe in, I'd recommend buying it in like five foot segments or something like that, whatever fits your needs, but you'll need four of those obviously. Okay, so now for our fittings, we're gonna need five of these three quarter inch T's right here. We need one of these three quarter inch 90 degree elbows. And we are gonna need five of these caps. You really don't need the caps if you don't want them, but uh, I recommend them. Uh, they just make it look cleaner and make it sit better on the floor. All right, so we just finished up at Lowe's and the total was under $20 before the PVC cutters. Most people don't need PVC cutters. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not totally sure. I have another set. I just don't have one with me. Um, and they're actually my dad, so I'll give them back to him. But I just got myself a new set of them. Um, nice little treat there. But again, under $20 for a ladder gate is really good. Um, and this is a very useful training feature. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and head home. I'll show you guys how to build this thing. All right, so we made it home, and the first thing I recommend you do before we go any farther is wiping down your PVC pipes with the white paper towel. You can see that these are absolutely disgusting. Um, and yeah, they ha always have this dust, dirt, and grime all over them from the store. So good idea, makes it a lot more pleasant to work with before we get started. And now we're gonna go ahead and start measuring things out here. I've got my little helper, um, but I decided I was gonna do a 24 inch square uh, for my ladder. I'd recommend you do the same. Like I said earlier, it's the standard pretty much for 65 millimeter whoop racing. If you're looking to do uh, underground whoop league spec racing style, uh, you might wanna look at a 30 inch diameter ladder um, or anywhere in between there. Obviously it's totally customizable based on your needs, but I'm gonna be doing 24 inches today. So we're gonna get the tape measure out, measure out to 24 inches or two feet and just make a mark, super simple. I think you guys know what's coming next. We're just gonna go ahead and align that mark with our cutters. Super easy cut, just like that. Our first segment is done. Um, and this is gonna be one of six that we do uh, for a two high ladder with a flag on top. So 
And if you measured properly and you're doing the 24 inches, you'll get exactly five pieces out of your first uh, 10 foot long section of PVC. All right, and there are our six sections of 24 inch uh, PVC. Now we're gonna do our flag for the top or our pylon that's gonna go with the top ladder that you can kind of spiral around to enter or exit the ladder. Um, and this can be whatever length you want it to be. It can be another 24 inch piece if you like, but I like making it just a little bit longer. I think it looks a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit easier to fly into if you have that marker a little bit taller. Um, you can make it three feet. I'm gonna make it 30 inches um, on my other ladders that I use with the LED gates. Um, it is a 30 inch piece, so I'm just gonna be consistent with it and measure out a 30 inch piece. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and measure out four 10 inch pieces, and these are gonna be for our legs of the ladder. Let's start with our legs. Each one of these 10 inch leg pieces is gonna get a cap, put on the end of it. Then we're gonna go ahead and put two of them into the ends of a T and repeat that like so. So there are our two leg pieces. Now we're gonna get started on our gates, which are three segments of the 24 inch pieces. So for our lower gate, we're gonna go ahead and use our T. All right, and then finally we've got our pylon that goes on the top right here. And our final cap right here. We're finally, this is gonna go out of frame. I understand that. But there's that, there's that. All right, here we have it guys. The ladder gate is all done and is ready to fly. As you can see, sits nicely up against the wall when you're not using it. Then you can go ahead and take it out and use it on your track um, and fly it. And that's the beauty of this lightweight three quarter inch PVC is it's really solid and sturdy, but it's also super lightweight, easy to move around. And of course, everything's friction fit. So if you wanna go ahead and take it apart and use it in a different configuration, super easy to, if you want a single high ladder, or if you wanna stack another one on top of it, fully expandable and modular. Let's go ahead and now get some packs charged up and I wanna set something simple up and show you guys how I practice flying with this feature. So we are in the goggles now, uh, just booted up and I'm gonna do two batteries. We're gonna do the first one, which is just basically I'm gonna fly around, show you guys how I have the room set up and essentially how this is gonna flow and how you can use uh, the ladder and then one other feature like a pylon or another gate or something uh, as a way to flow around a tight space and get real practice out of it. And the second one will go a little bit more technical into how I approach the ladder and how I recommend uh, you do it a little bit faster and more consistent um, and that can improve your racing. I'm not the best racer out there so take everything I say with a grain of salt. You might have a totally different method that works way better um, but this is just how I do it. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I am using this small dining room area of the apartment as my little room. So pretend there's a wall right here where I'm flying, like kind of behind the couch. Um, and you can set your ladder up so the short side is close to the wall or up against it because you don't really need to fly out here, but you do need to orbit around this pole. So don't have this side up against the wall, uh, have the other side. And then this is my tripod that I was using to film the last clips. And as you can see, it's set up on the table as a pylon. And I have it in line with the ladder, as you can see. And essentially how we're gonna use this is you're gonna go ahead and go down the ladder. And then you can kind of come around the tripod and then hit the ladder again. And this allows a nice clean entry and exit in and out of the ladder. And you can keep doing this. And it's a great way to practice. But if you wanna switch up the flow, you can also go in between them. And now I'm going down a right ladder instead of a left ladder. I can switch it again and now I'm going back over to the left instead of the right. And now again, back over to the right. Back over to the left. And this is something that you can kind of just do mindlessly and it really helps you get a lot of reps in on the ladder. Uh, a lot of people just put a big track together and they only fly the ladder, you know, four or five times per pack instead of 20 times per pack. And you can hit the ladder in all different ways. You can go 
up above and then split S to the bottom and then back through and then do it again the other direction. Um, you can do it a bunch of different ways. One of my favorite ways to do it recently is to do a split S in the last gate. You know, but all these ways are compatible with the way that we have the room set up. And you can just go back and forth. Of course, we can do a full ladder up, which is a good thing to practice as well. It's a kind of a different feeling movement than a ladder down, but a lot of the ways it's very much the same. So this pull on the other side basically redirects your movement to whoever you, however way you want it to be. Um, and it's totally up to you. Again, this is more mindless. I don't even know what I'm doing right now, what I'm doing for the next turn until I kind of get there and I do it. I'm just flowing around the room. And that is why this is really good practice um, because you're able to carry a little bit of speed and enter the feature like you would in an actual race with that same direction of turn before and after um, because that's how these ladders flow best and that's how you want to practice them. So again, super versatile. I could go on and on about it, but I think my battery is getting low, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it in and we'll get started on the next pack. All right, pack number two here, and we're going to talk about how I enter the ladders. And essentially, ideally, if you're in a ladder, you're holding one movement and the quad is kind of corkscrewing down or spiraling down perfectly for you. So my sticks really aren't moving. You can see my throttle especially is not moving as I'm going through the ladder up and down and up and down and up and down. Obviously, you're going to use more throttle when you're going up versus down. But the biggest thing is, is that you want to have one consistent way that you hold the stick and let the quad do the work rather than trying to go forward, turn around, forward, turn around, throttle, turn, throttle, turn, throttle, turn. That's not a fast way to go through the ladder. Now there's a few ways that I like to practice the ladder and the first one is with a wide entry. So I'm going all the way around the back pylon and entering from the front essentially. And the other way is from a slim entry where you're kind of coming around um, right at the ladder like this and then you have to make a hard turn into the ladder and turn out of it and when I'm coming in wide I'm really trying to find that first initial turn um, and the way that I have to hold my sticks and go down the spiral um, and it's a lot easier when you're going in a little bit wider because you can kind of be a little bit more gentle however when you're coming in precisely you have to be a lot more gutsy with the throttle I guess you have to spike it just a little bit to kind of hold your position in that spiral and keep you close and tight and going through the gate so as you get better the motion stays the same it's just you're gonna be adding more throttle especially when you're flying with a higher camera tilt I'm flying at 45 degrees of camera tilt um, your throttle really is your speed and it's not your altitude and the biggest thing that's also important to learn is adjusting when you're off your line. So let's say I blow this turn out way wide. It is taking the time to slow down and getting back on your line with the ladder so that you don't crash because ultimately it's better to go slow than to try to go fast and crash. And that's the, if there's one thing that I could tell you if you're trying to be a competitive whoop racer at any level is that it's better to go slow and do it consistently than to go fast and force a crash. And that's kind of obvious, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, you want to be competitive and you want to go fast. And uh, it's happened to all of us. So anyways, that's the end of this battery. And I hope that you learned a little bit about ladders and how you can use them in a small space to get good practice in. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining. Um, that's a little bit of a step into my world as I'm flying in a small space. Uh, it's not the end all be all method, but it's something that's certainly helped me over the past year when I've lived in a tiny little living room that was about the size of the area that I was flying in. Um, and I was really able to get faster um, and not let that small space hinder me when I'm trying to get some packs and I don't have access to a larger venue. I know the build was pretty simple, but a lot of people uh, like having that, uh, all the instructions laid out for them. So hopefully that helps you. All the links will be in the description below. Another thing about the build that I forgot to mention is that it may be helpful if you want to wrap the poles in like painter's tape or electrical tape or something so you can see them better, especially if your room is full of natural light. 
Um, some people also like to put pool noodles around uh, their poles and that can help, but also you wanna factor that into your uh, dimensions when you're looking at cutting your PVC um, because that'll add like two inches on each side of the pool noodle thickness. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, leave a comment if this was helpful for you or not, or if you liked it, didn't like it, whatever. Do all that YouTube stuff. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna try to get back to posting regularly. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.